Mike Leslie, WFA. Kyrie, just what is your overall assessment of, of how you guys performed today? Where did you see growth, and why was it still ultimately not enough? Uh, I mean, we beat ourselves a little bit tonight uh, just on our turnovers and uh, just some of our defensive rotations. They got a lot of uh, you know, opportunities, second chance opportunities, where uh, they got a uh, opportunity to go into fast break and um, just create uh, just mismatches in transition. Uh, so you know, look at some of the positives for sure where uh, we won the first and fourth. But at the end of the day, we got to win all four quarters uh, if we want a great chance against this team. And uh, we got to make sure that we create enough separation where uh, we can play comfortably too and freely. Um, you know, so we, we had a good uh, pulse about the game, I believe, going up until halftime and then afterwards. Um, you know, they did what other great teams do, um, you know, where they put their foot on the gas pedal, started pushing a little bit, a little bit more, um, penetrating down the lane a little bit more and creating some opportunities at the free throw line. So, and they converted them tonight, 19 for 20. Uh, so you got to give them credit. They definitely picked up their defensive pressure. Um, but I feel like we got some great looks as well. So uh, it's definitely a great test for us. Uh, they did what they had to do. They won both games at home. Now it's our job to go home and win both games at home. Front row, Valencia. Valencia King, Real Talk Sports out of Dallas. Thank you for your time, Kyrie. Home court advantage is something that gets talked about a lot, especially from a media standpoint. As a player, is that something that you guys can lean into as the series shifts back to Dallas? Yeah, I mean, you want to take advantage of playing in front of your home crowd, uh, feeling a confident, um, feeling confident, and uh, being able to play in a familiar place. And like I said, uh, they handled what they were supposed to do first two games, and now it's our job to go home and handle our business. Um, but you got to give them credit. They kept competing. We kept competing. Uh, we just got to stay together in some of the tough times throughout the game um, where it you know, could be a four-point lead on them or a four-point lead that we have. Uh, we just got to keep competing, and uh, I think we'll be in a better place. But feel good. Second row on the left. Chris Gasper, Boston Globe. Uh, Kyrie, it looked like you were in a good flow uh, first half, you know, five of ten. Second half, two of eight. Did they change anything in terms of the way they defended you? And also, through the two games, you got some really good looks from three. Do you feel like it's only a matter of time before those go down? Yeah, that's, that's the confidence that I have in myself. Um, you know, a lot of shots were hitting the back rim. Uh, that could piss you off as a competitor. Um, but it's all part of the game of basketball, and you got to accept the ups and downs of this. Um, you know, that's that, that's the, uh, I would say, the toughest challenge when you're in a series. You want to play extremely well, especially when you're playing in the finals. Um, you know, a little disappointed uh, in myself, not being able to convert a lot more of my opportunities that I have in the lane. Um, you know, obviously I'm going against Drew Holiday and Jalen Brown um, a, a few times, but I, I feel like I have the upper edge on certain possessions where I just got to convert. Um, they're pushing me to my left hand a little bit more. So I just got to be aware of some of their adjustments like I was in game one. Um, felt good in the first half, but in the second half, uh, just the shots weren't going down. And defensively, I was out of position, got some ticky-tack fouls, and um, just kind of took away from our flow of the game as well. Um, it wasn't just all on me, but I'm definitely taking the majority of it just because um, you know, my teammates look to me to convert a lot of these shots and uh, ease the burden, not only just Luca, but everyone else, and, and settle our team. Um, you know, we've definitely made our identity on defensive end, but now offensively, I got to play better. First row, Tim. Tim McMahon, ESPN. Uh, when Luca was in here, he pointed at his turnovers and his missed free throws. He said, that, you know, those are the, the reasons you guys lost the game. Just curious your reaction to, uh, you know, Luca taking the blame and specifically citing those two things. Yeah, I think we talked about this last series. Um, you know, he did something similar, but when you're in the finals and, and you're taking a brunt of accountability, he he definitely, um, you know, he's 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 in the right for wanting to um, single himself out. But this is a team game. Uh, he's not alone, and we're going to tell him that. Um, but you know, you, as expected, he's fresh off the court. He's uh, spilling into these emotions. He he feels like he could have played better, just like me. Um, I would take a brunt of that responsibility. The first two games weren't uh, the best for me, especially him scoring. You know, 25 plus points, getting uh, rebounds, getting assists, doing the intangibles. And um, you know, for me, I've always felt responsible for getting other guys comfortable out there too. So, um, you know, it's on all of us, man. It, it, I'm pretty sure if you hear um, what everybody has to say, they'll say that they can do something better. Um, but I, I think the message right now is just uh, get our bearings together. Uh, we lost by seven points. Um, we don't want to take the total or the um, the total number, um, you know, back home and say we're proud of that. Not not we don't want to do that. We want to go home and be prepared to to win games. And in order to do that, we got to be ready to defend this this good uh, Boston Celtics team, man. Second row on the right. 
Michael Pina, The Ringer. Uh, Kyrie, how important is it for you guys to attack and transition a little bit more and avoid half-court offense? Your output with fast break points in games one and two were the lowest so far of the postseason for you guys. Yeah, it's just adjusting to the pace. Um, you know, they're, they're playing a great style of basketball, a great brand of basketball where they're pushing in transition. Uh, sometimes those opportunities don't come as often or as easy. Uh, they have guys back loaded. Um, they have a lot of guys that are athletic that are running back in transition. You saw when PJ had an opportunity to cut it to five. Um, you know, you saw Derek White, you know, contest him at the rim. You saw Derek White over there again contesting against D. Lively. Even though he got dunked on, he still came over there and contested, and that's what they've been doing. They uh, have a lot of pride on that end, and uh, they're not going to make it easy on us. So in, in the fast break component, we definitely can create more opportunities for ourselves when we're in Dallas and look forward to doing that. Second row, Vinny. Kyrie, Vince Google, Yahoo Sports. And, and towards the end of the third quarter, you cut the lead to six. Peyton Pritchard hits that half-court buzzer beater. And then the Luka play where Drew jumps in the passing lane, they get the steal, they get a three out of it. Does it feel like you're close and those plays, those moments just sort of tilt the scales just that much more away from you guys? Yeah, I just chalked that up to just being in Boston, man. Uh, you know, some of those shots, some you know, they go up in the air. And I remember, um, you know, last game, Sam Hauser caught it in the corner. And I don't even think he brought the ball down. And um, it was you know, practically all net. So they, they feel very confident here. They, they've been a great team all year. Just look at their record. I don't know how many total games they've lost uh, you know, since the postseason uh, started, but I, I don't think it's more than six or seven. Um, so they've, they've really made their identity here. They want to take care of home court. Um, and now it's our job to go home and do the same. Um, you know, being in the finals before, down 0-2, uh, I have a little experience in this. Um, you know, didn't play particularly well in the first two games in that series two that I'm referring to. Um, so now I'm just really leaning in on of what I've experienced, what I've learned, and uh, some of the lessons I've been able to make sense of um, in how to come back in this series because it's, it is going to be a possession by possession thing. Um, and it is going to be the hardest thing that we've ever done. Um, so I, I think we got a great feel, a great experience here in Boston, what the finals is like for our group. Um, and now we go home, uh, kind of shake off the cobwebs a little bit, and just be prepared for another fight. Stay consistent on defense, you know. Our communication is always tested when it comes to games like this because of how much they want to play on the perimeter. We just got to make sure we get those guys inside the line and make sure our rotations are top tier. Any other questions? Daniel, uh, Brad Townsend, Dallas Morning News. Uh, so you had two points at halftime, and but you, just 11 in the second half. What do you think uh, was you re, guys were able to get going inside um, because it's kind of been a missing component in the first game and a half? You just got to play to the physicality. At the end of the day, you know, they're pushing us around. We got to be able to do the same thing. So that's kind of like what the message was when, it, when we came out second half, set the tone physically. First row, Mike. Mike Curtis, Dallas Morning News. Um, Jason talked about just finding offense outside of Luke and Kyrie. Obviously, the live threat is a big part in that. Mm -hmm. um, you guys are able to get a couple tonight. Just what can be done to make sure that's sustainable going forward? Having poise offensively and making sure we get the right guys downhill. Well, pretty much any guy downhill, to be honest. We got a lot of guys that can, you know, drive to the basket and score the ball that gravitate a lot of attention from anybody that's the low man. So we just have to make sure, you know, as bigs, me and D-Live, and make sure we get the guys, the guys downhill to where they can get a shot off, we get a rebound if they miss it, or just throw the lob over the top. Third row. Daniel uh, Gil McGregor from Sporting News. Kyrie mentioned winning the first and the fourth quarter, and there's some positives there. What do you take from this game and bottle up to try to take back to Dallas and, and get things in your favor? I mean, for sure we're focusing on the positive things at the end of the day. You know, I know Lucas said that it was a lot on him when it came down to it. It's a team, it's a team game. You know, we can't have one person taking the blame for everything because, you know, we all have faults in certain areas on the floor and we make up for that trying just really just you know continuing to play through just adversity any obstacle that we face you know we always have to play through that as a team so i mean he missed free throws i missed free throws there's a lot of guys that missed free throws tonight and that hurt us so I mean, it's not just on him not on Kyrie. it's a team thing we just have to just come out with the same mindset that we had tonight judge how to win all four quarters first row mike leslie wfa Daniel, there was a lot of guys on this roster that did not have experience in this round coming into this series. Mm -hmm. 
you seemed more comfortable as a group tonight now that you are two games into the series, even though you did lose both of them. Are there things that you feel like you've learned about what this stage is like, and are, can that help you at all going forward? Oh, for sure. This is, the, this is the biggest stage in the NBA. You know, everybody wants to be here at the end of the season. So, you know, we just have to come prepared, you know, shake off, shake off the nerves, get the butterflies out. It's going to be crazy atmosphere, crazy energy. It's the NBA Finals. Everybody wants to be in this situation. First row, Valencia. Valencia King, Real Talk Sports. Samuel, thank you for your time. You mentioned the crazy atmosphere that it's going to be when you get back to Dallas. Um, the, from a media standpoint, we talk about home court advantage. For, as a player standpoint, is that something that you guys can lean into at this stage? Yeah, for sure. You know, they got their crowd into it when we came here, and they did their job when it came to just protecting the home court. We got to do the same thing. Third row, Eddie. Eddie Sefko, Mavs.com. It's the first time you guys have lost two in a row in the playoffs. Uh, is is the is the psyche okay for this team and 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 how do you kind of gather yourself going home? Uh, just focus on the positives, and then at the end of the day, we just find ways to just make adjustments to what we kind of lacked in certain areas. Most definitely, you know, watch film, learn from it, be ready for the next one. All the way to the back of the, to the right. Champ DeLunis from ABS eBay News. Daniel, uh, Chris Tapps exploded in game one and drew on game two. Do you think this is because you concentrate your defense too much on JT and JB? Uh, I don't think so. I just feel like they just made plays at the end of the day. Any other questions? DJ Siddiqui of Forbes, what is the biggest thing you feel like you guys need to improve upon to turn this series around? Just our poise being comfortable in the situation. We have to embrace the atmosphere and just really just embrace whatever's going to be thrown at us. You know, this is a great team that we're playing against and they're going to throw everything they can at us to just rattle us at the, in any given circumstance. So we just have to take our time. All right, thanks, Daniel. Mm -hmm. I always want to play. Uh, so we did all day, we did a lot of things to get ready for the game. Physically tonight, uh, obviously a lot of minutes, you know, going in the fourth quarter, especially. Good, good. I, I was okay. Second row. Luca, it looked like you had a uh, an interaction with this Celtics owner. There was, did he do something or say something that uh, that you thought was over the line? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know who's the Celtics owner. Was there somebody in the uh, in the first row that you were having an exchange with that was the Celtics owner? No. Mike. Luca. Mike Curtis, the Dallas Morning News. Um, in a game where the Celtics um, shot 26% from three, um, Jason Tatum didn't have a necessarily good offensive outing. Does it feel like a missed opportunity that you guys weren't able to capitalize in a game like this? Every game we lose, it's a missed opportunity for us. We'll go here on the first row, pink shirt. Mike Leslie, WFA. Luca, later in the game, it seemed like you guys started to be able to get more people involved, but for a while there, first and second quarter, even into the third, it seemed like it was heavily you. What did finally start to work, and how can you guys get more people involved offensively earlier on in the game? So you're saying in the third, there was less people involved? I'm saying in the first half, there were it was mostly you, and then you guys eventually started to oh, get yeah, yeah. more people involved. Uh, what eventually worked? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously it didn't work because we lost. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, we got to make some more shots. Uh, you know, I think my turnovers and my missed free throws cost us a game. Uh, so I got to do way better in those two categories. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, we got to make shots to win them, to win the game. To the left, Tomer. Uh, Tomer is already with clutch points. Luca, Celtics are already a deep team, and you guys have shown a lot of your depth, but you when know, the shot making is not going down, it's a bit more apparent. I guess, how do you guys counteract their depth, um, just given that, you know, Tatum and Brown can have an off night and Drew can kind of go off? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're good. That's with the number one team in the NBA, uh, with the number one record. Uh, they have a lot of great players. Uh, practically anybody can get off. Uh, so. Honestly, I think we didn't do a bad job defending today. Uh, we took away some threes. We contested more threes. Uh, but like I say, you know, uh, I had too many turnovers, and 
We missed a lot of free throws, so I think that cost us a game. Third row on the right, left. Tada je Alan pred Poptevi. Luka, igro Bostona ste seveda dobro analizirali, ampak so vas v teh prvih dveh finalnih tehmah s čimar koli presenetili? Ne, niso me z ničem presenetili. Vemo, kako igrajo celo sezono, so tako igrali. Tako da niso glih s ničem presenetili. Treba je pa tako, ko smo dan strojke vzeti iz njihove igre. Third row on the right. Luka, Eddie, Sefko, Mavs.com. How tough has their defense been physically, and are they doing something unusual or different for you, or are you guys having breakdowns offensively? I mean, they're physical, yeah. But, you know, they're trying to guard one-on-one. I think today they're trying to help more, so I was able to get some teammates open. But they're physical. They're very physical. You know, they let them be physical. Uh, so they're pretty, pretty, pretty uh, amazing in defense. Brad. Brad Townsend, Dallas Morning News. Do you remember how exactly did the injury occur? Jason wasn't sure if you took, took a charge or we were diving for a loose ball. Uh, I think it was a charge. Uh, we don't really know because I didn't feel it till the next day. Uh, so I was really surprised. Uh, so we think it was the charge. And then secondly, as the series goes back to Dallas for games three and four, what do you think most of all that you guys need to do to, to turn the series around? We've got to make shots. We've got to make free throws and less turnovers. Those three things, I think, are the key for a win, to win. Last row on the right. Uh, Richard Moore in USA Today. Boston hasn't lost a game on the road yet this postseason. What specifically can you do at home to make things a little bit more difficult for them? Is there anything specific at home that you guys can do? Uh, score more points. I don't know. But at the end of the day, it's basketball away at home. We just got to play better basketball to win. Fifth row on the left. ¿Qué tal, Luca? Catega Sorena, ESPN. ¿Qué viste distinto del equipo de Celtics defensivamente en la segunda mitad? Dijeron que hicieron un énfasis para buscar neutralizarte a ti en lo personal. Nada. Eh, han jugado igual, creo. Así que en la, eh, el primer tiempo, el segundo tiempo, eh, en el segundo pasado más el balón, eh, intentando a mis compañeros eh, que se, para que anoten, pero eh, igual los dos tiempos. Yeah. Front row here in the center. Okay. Bob. Hi, Luca. Uh, um, do you guys take something away from staying around because they seem to be, to be putting so much pressure to keep trying to pull away? Do you guys take solace to that you were able to stay in the game for as long as, you know, to right to the end? Uh, sorry, I don't understand you. Well, I mean, they they, they seem to be uh, ready to pull away in several different place, uh, points in, in the fourth quarter. Do you guys take uh, something away from it by being able to stay in the game right to the last minute? Uh, I guess. Mm. Yeah, I don't really know how to respond, but yes. I'm sorry. Okay, thanks, Luca. <laughs> All right, questions for Coach. We'll start here with Mike in the front. Mike Curtis, Dallas Morning News. Jason, what was your interpretation of the fast break with PJ that led to the block by Derek White there at the end? My interpretation, um, it looked like a foul, but it wasn't called, so it wasn't a foul. Steve here on the left. Uh, Jason, you, you called two timeouts on deep in the third quarter about two minutes apart. Um, their lead had gone from two to six, and then it went from six to 12. Uh, what were you looking for coming out of that first time out that might have made the second one not needed? Yeah, um, just trying to keep, you know, Boston's a team that can run off threes in a, in a hurry. So uh, just trying to uh, keep that from happening. Also looking at just trying to give my guys some rest um, because they're they're fighting extremely hard, uh, we're, we're playing uphill, and so uh, the lead went from six to twelve. Um, but then uh, uh, we responded after that second timeout. Hey, Front row here on the left. 
Hey coach, Maria Turner here with D210 Sports. How much did free throws factor into tonight's loss? Big, you know, the, the small things, we, we don't, you know, we have to do the small things and that's part of the game. You know, those are points that we left on the board and we didn't shoot free throws well tonight and we have to be better. Tim McMahon, ESPN. Uh, you know, Kyrie came out early, you know, looked like he was rolling. Why do you think his rhythm was disrupted and he wasn't able to be as impactful offensively the, the rest of the game? Uh, he had great looks. He just didn't go down. That's just the game of basketball. Um, sometimes you make them, sometimes you don't. You, you can continue to keep playing. Uh, he had some good looks that just didn't go down for him tonight. Mike right. Leslie, WFA. Uh, Luca was in just a minute ago, said that his missed free throws and his turnovers cost you guys the game. I'm just wondering your perspective on the totality of his performance. Yeah, he was great. Um, no matter what he says, um, that's just who he is. He's a leader. Um, and it's not you know, all on him. It's a team. We win as a team and we lose as a team. And so um, he put us in a position. Um, he was really good tonight. Um, and unfortunately, we just couldn't um, you know, get over the hump. I thought our defense was really, really good. We just got to take care of the ball. Just too many turnovers uh, that gave them points. And then also, um, you know, being able to, we got to, we got to score the ball. And uh, right now, we, we got to find someone to, to join Luca and Kai in that scoring category. Second row, Tim. Tim Cato, the Athletic. Jason, it seemed like you know Luca got Boston to blink a little bit. There was more help. They were leaving players open more often, like you said. Um, you know, there just needs to be more scoring or, or more shot making. What, what did you kind of see in the second half of the way that that Boston defended you guys and, and Luca specifically, and uh, why you guys weren't able to to you know take advantage of that space? Yeah, I think um, you know Luca's a special player. He's one, if not the best player in the world, and he causes a problem. And uh, he's able to find guys um, again, creating open uh, opportunities, and uh, we just didn't take advantage of it. Um, and we'll go back and look and see uh, if we can get even better looks. But the looks that we got, you know, we just missed uh, some open threes. It was good to see Exum uh, knock down an open three, and hopefully we can build on that. Second row on the right. Uh, Jason, Matt Votor, Mass Live. On Wednesday, you talked about the Shaq and Kobe teams and said you felt like your Nets teams weren't good enough. You mentioned the, the that Golden State Warrior team that, that beat both you guys and the Celtics. With your young guys, do you, you, ha you have to kind of get them in the right headspace to not be concerned that they're not good enough af after two games, especially when Celtics didn't haven't shot all that well? Yeah, I think... Um we do have a, a quite a few young players, and uh, and for them to you know have fun and enjoy this um, and learn from it, and that's what they're doing. Um, and we've counted on them all year, not um, just here in the finals, but throughout the season, uh, and also in the Western Conference Finals or uh, the playoffs with Oklahoma City or the Clippers. Um, and for them, it's just a matter of getting comfortable and, and going back home. Hopefully, that will help. Second row here on the left. DJ Siddiqui of Forbes, as you, look to t as you look to turn this series around, heading back to Dallas, what's the biggest message that you send to your team? Yeah, we just got to stay positive. Um, some of us have been in this situation before, and, uh, and so just take one possession at a time, and we've got to focus on game three, and that's all. Last row on the right. Richard Moore in USA Today. Heading back to Dallas, making the Celtics play on the road. They haven't lost a game on the road yet this year. Are there certain adjustments you can make to make life a little tougher for them in Dallas? Yeah, they haven't lost a game since May something, right? So, uh, yeah, they're hot. They're not just on the road, but at home. So um, we got to protect home, and that's it. Um, we got to find a way, continue, again, to build on our defense. Our defense put us in a position uh, to win uh, tonight. Unfortunately, our offense uh, didn't, didn't uh, help us, and so, uh, again, Kai and Luca are going to get their looks. It's, uh, we got to get someone else involved uh, of being able to knock down some shots. But um, defensively, uh, we can build on this and we can be better. But we got to take care of the ball. And if we can take care of the ball, hopefully that gives us more opportunities at scoring. Third row on the right. Daniel Bell, BSO. Coach, how do you find that balance between playing one on one and trying to get those other guys involved? Yeah, well, I think it's a matter of not just playing one on one, but setting um, setting it up so that they can get a live ball catch and be able to work. 
Um, we had a, there with Luca there for a minute. He was uh, playing, you know, below the defense, and we were able to get him on the on the box or at the uh, nail, and he took full advantage of that. Um, and so, uh, just being able to move the pieces around, and uh, and I thought we did that. Uh, we we got to take care of the ball. I've said this. Uh, I sound like I'm repeating myself, but if we can take care of the ball and not give them live ball turnovers where they're just laying the ball up or dunking it, it puts us in a better seat. And so we just got to take care of the ball. That's the next step in the series. Last, last question to the right. Uh, Coach Champ De Lunas from ABS CBN News Philippines. What can you build on going on to games three and four, like the positives that you could emphasize to your players to encourage them instead of being down? Yeah, we're not down. Uh, we're positive. This is a group that believes. Um, we didn't get an opportunity to, to get a split or win two here on the road. So now uh, Boston held serve. Now we got to go home and hold serve.